Okay. Hey everyone. So our next assignment is going to be uh, making a book cover and we're going to illustrate a book cover of a book that doesn't exist. I will explain what that means in just a second. Um, so we're going to go into that prompt and get that explanation that I'm promising. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about planning out a book cover and um, the things to consider. And then uh, I asked a couple of illustrators who illustrate covers as part of their practice, uh, what tips they have for young designers and illustrators. So we're just going to get started and, and see, see where this goes. All right, so the prompt. Our next assignment is going to be to illustrate a book cover. I just said that. There are so many wonderful book covers out in the world, so to make sure that yours is unique, um, I'd like you to illustrate a cover of a non-existent book. A what? A book that doesn't really exist in this universe IRL in real life. Um, you can go one of two routes. You can choose just a randomized title. So I have a, um, a, a title randomizer as a link here. I will add it uh, also into our class notes. Um, and so you can just randomize any kind of title and kind of make up what you think it might, it might be about and then make a cover from there. Or the second route is that you can choose a title of a book that appears in another piece of media. Um, it can appear in a movie, in another book, in a TV show, but it doesn't really exist. So I've included a couple of links, and I will again include them in the class notes, um, to those kinds of book titles, book titles that exist like in the world of Harry Potter or um, in, in another movie, like this is a Wes Anderson movie, uh, this is the Royal Tenenbaums. And Wes Anderson in his films oftentimes has his characters reading books, but those books aren't books that exist in our world, they exist in the world of his characters. And so um, I have a couple of lists here of books like that, that you can choose from. Uh, and I want you to choose an illustrated book cover that includes the title of the book, the author's name, and an illustration reflecting the imagined content and mood of that book, right? So based upon maybe the context that you might get from the the film or the um, television show or the book that this book appears in, um, you might get some hints as to what the content is really about and uh, what the genre is and what kind of imagery you might want to put into that book. Otherwise, if you're using a randomized title, a lot of that is up to you. And so it's up to you whether you want to have like a completely imagined space that you're drawing from or whether you want to have some clues and context. So like I said, take hints from the source of the fictional book for cues on style and content. And then let's just let your imagination lead you. I mentioned Harry Potter. This is a book that appears in Harry Potter. This is the Tales of Beetle the Bard. Hermione's carrying it around a lot. Um, and this is the imagined book cover of that, that book. So that's the prompt. Now we get to layout and planning. So you have to create a full book jacket, including the front cover, the back cover, and the spine. I just grabbed one from my library here. So here is uh, Zadie Smith's Swing Time. So I want you to include the front cover, the spine, as well as the back cover. And so I want you to include it all on as a single image so that you have, boom, all of it right here. This one also has um, inset tabs. Uh, that fold in. You don't have to include that if you don't want to, but if you are going to be physically like printing this out and putting it around a real book, which would be cool, um, those are necessary to allow the book jacket to cover the um, cover of the book. Okay, so on the back cover, you do not need to include a synopsis or blurbs, which is usually like the words that appear on the back of a book, but you have to leave space for that content, right? Because, you know, this is like an actual industry. Um, those kinds of things are really important to the book cover design. And so make sure that you leave space for that on the back. Um, these are a couple of book uh, illustration book cover illustrations that I thought were really cool. This is Juhi Yoon's. Um, you can see that Juhi Yoon is, is using the entire span of the book jacket as this canvas. And so that's one, one approach that you can take is not just, you know, designing a front cover and a back cover separately, maybe considering the entire thing as like a canvas would be one route to go. 
So this is going to require planning out all of these different elements that appear on your cover before you begin to really draw. You want to block the composition out first and thumb out lots of different versions. Process is your friend. So just lots of different versions, figuring out where you want to place the text. Don't start drawing right away. Maybe start like doodling imagery and stuff um, on the sides, but really start to figure out how you're going to fit all this, these blocks together. Where are you going to put the, the title? Where are you going to put the author name? And if there's anything else that you need to include, um, any decorational aspects, really plan out how that fits compositionally on the on the, the page that you're using, uh, the cover or the entire uh, book jacket, before you really start to go in and add lots of details so that you have these thumbnails to work from. So these are, um, actually this is interesting, this is three different versions of the same cover of the same um, book. Uh, these are all illustrated and designed by Kimberly Glider someone who we got some tips from that are coming in the end of this lecture. Um, and what I thought was really wonderful is that these are all for the same book and they all have similar elements uh, engaged with it, but you can see how differently she approached it. I think the one on the far left is the one that ended up being chosen, but personally, I like, I like the two on the right with the gem a lot. Um, but yeah, so you can see that, you know, the same components are included in each of these um, approaches to illustrating the book jacket, but they're all approached a little bit differently. So I want to see the same kind of variation in your sketches. So hand lettering. We talk about hand lettering a lot because I say, I'd much prefer you to do hand lettering than putting like type on there. When planning, don't forget to consider the lettering. This is a super important element seeing as, you know, people have to like read it. <laughs> it has to be legible. It has to stand out, right? Um, use hand lettering to make your book really stand out and engage seamlessly with the visuals. You want to illustrate the words. So what's wonderful about hand lettering is your illustration and the lettering will come together in a way that feels complete because they're both your hand. Again, hand lettering takes a lot of practice. And if you do want to add, you know, um, more typeset, uh, a more typeset title, you can use it. But I definitely recommend and I encourage at least one of your sketches include a hand lettered approach. Okay, cool. So these two are covers illustrated by Carson Ellis, which are wonderful. And you can really see that the hand lettering, even though it's pretty straightforward and she's definitely looking at, you know, um, possibly other fonts or other existing lettering to, to draw from, they, they fit within the context of the illustration really well because it has the same kind of like, imperfect feel as the illustration and it becomes really lovely. So media, how to do this, how what to how what to put in it. So you can use any media you like when creating the final product. Um, digital or traditional, there are tons of different fun techniques that you can use and bring into your image making. Use what you've learned in class um, and also in my other classes or you know uh, your other classes, learn, use what you've learned this year, um, or try something new. So you don't just have to illustrate a, um, book cover in Photoshop or, um, you know, a straightforward pen and ink thing. You can use collage. Um, you can use illustrator. You can use any technique you really want. You could even, um, Embroider. So these are two book covers. There was another one or two um, by Jillian Tamaki for Penguin. And these book covers um, are all embroidered. And so what's really cool about these is that it gave the books when they were like, the book jackets were then printed, this really wonderful tactile feel, even though they were printed on like a paper jacket, right? So um, if you were to go this route, I would want you not only to embroider the the book jacket but i would want you to also scan it so that it's able to be you know um reproduced and and edited and things like that um but again you, the world is your oyster there's plenty of things that you can do um, and just let yourself be creative with it 